So you've had a course, uh, at least one course in internal affairs investigations? Yes, sir. Okay. And was that while you were employed with the city? Yes. Okay. Was that before or after this, the internal affairs investigation that was conducted uh, in this case against Officer Malera? I believe shortly after. Okay. So the, your training course was uh, after you concluded this investigation? That's correct. Okay. Well, Arena, I'm sorry. Okay. Not when, I believe it was during the time. I can't tell you exactly uh, the time frame as to when I actually attended the uh, course for the uh, internal affairs investigations. Um, and Lieutenant, I, uh, obviously since we're conducting this hearing by Zoom today, uh, all I can see is your upper torso, but are you, do you have notes in front of you that you are reviewing? At this time? Yes, sir. Uh, that I'm reviewing other than the file that I had actually reviewed over the week and other than that, I don't have anything else. Okay, there's no other documents in front of you uh, while, you're, while you'll be testifying today? No, just the, uh, like I said, the file that I had, um, okay. it's the same file that you should have in hand. Okay, did you receive uh, uh, via email the list of exhibits uh, by the union? It should be consisting of 24 exhibits? I did, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, and I believe there were six additional exhibits that um, have not been entered into evidence yet, but did you also receive those? I'm sorry? Uh, there should have been uh, also six additional exhibits that are numbered 25 <laughs> through 30. Uh, did you also receive those, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. From time to time, I may ask you, uh, and I believe uh, Arbitrator Shulman may assist us in putting on the screen certain exhibits, but I just wanted to make sure that you had them there as well. I apologize, I'm having issues here. Okay. We can hear you and see you if that helps. I don't know uh, if you want to describe what issues you're seeing. Okay. It did my machine went cl uh, clear. Um, I'm back up now. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. I think where I'd left off is I, I was just asking if you have uh, exhibits one through 24, and then there should be six additional exhibits that came individually, I believe through the city's attorneys to you. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, I wanna ask, uh, we have heard in on day one of this arbitration, sir, I know you were not present for it, but uh, we heard that this particular IA investigation that you conducted of Officer Malero was your first internal affairs investigation for the city of Deland Police Department. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And as a Lieutenant now, um, are you involved in decisions to uh, terminate the employment? I am not. No, okay. sir, I am not. And within your role as a lieutenant in internal affairs or professional standards, are you called upon to uh, uh, make sustained or unsustained findings of allegations? Yes, sir. Okay. You said in your uh, the course you took, uh, for internal investigations. And I believe you said a moment ago, you're, you don't recall if it, it commenced before or after this internal affairs investigation, is that correct? Can you repeat the question again? Yeah, the course you said that you took uh, on specifically on conducting internal affairs investigations. I believe you told us a moment ago, you're not, you don't recall if you finished the course 
before or after this investigation was completed. Is that correct? Correct. Do you recall if you had been exposed to or trained on the Law Enforcement Officer Bill of Rights at the time you commenced this investigation? As far as me reviewing the um, the uh, report in itself, the Bill of Rights, is that what you're asking? Yes, sir. Were you familiar with it? Did you know, had you received any training on it? I did not receive any training on it. I, based, I actually reviewed the entire uh, uh, Bill of Rights. Okay. That's I discussed it also with Sergeant Estes, who at the time um, was retiring. I discussed some of the... Uh, uh, the uh, Bill of Rights and in addition to the uh, Garrity warning. So we discussed a little bit on that. Okay, was Sergeant Estes your predecessor in internal affairs? Yes. Okay. So in the transition, he discussed uh, some of these matters that you just mentioned, the Officer Bill of Rights, the Garrity warning, et cetera? Yes, sir. Okay. And again, was that prior to you starting the internal affairs investigation against Officer Malero? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Now, I want to turn to uh, the incident that we're here about, and that, that occurred on September 14 of 2017, involving Officer Malero and a citizen by the name of Alan Kidd, K-I-D-D. Are you familiar with that, sir? I am. Okay. Um, can you tell us uh, how did you become involved? And by that, I mean, how were you assigned to conduct this investigation? Again, I uh, came in as a uh, sergeant in Estes who was exiting, um, was retiring, um, at which point I was assigned this particular case. Okay. And we know this was your first IA as the, uh, in internal affairs. I want to ask you, did you, were you provided any, um, first of all, any documents to review to commence your investigation? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you summarize what you recall those documents being? The information that I received at the time is that the fact that um, there was a 20 second video that was actually provided at, uh, at the, uh, when this, in, internal affairs began. Um, apparently at the time that this video was presented, it didn't present the entire uh, incident. Um, I was giving some documentations as far as um, uh, Mr. Kidd's attorney representative, um, basically saying that there was a lawsuit that was um, in process in reference to uh, unlawful detention, unreasonable um, use of force, um, and that's how, that's the documentation that I, I had at hand. Okay. And by the way, um, I had asked you just a moment ago about the officer bill of rights. Uh, um, if, if you're able to open our exhibit 16, I just wanted to, you to identify these and see if we're talking about the same thing. Exhibit 16, if it came to you and they- Oh, hold on, hold on, counsel. Hold on. Okay. Page 76. All right, can you folks all see the document that I've, I'm attempting to share? Yes, sir. And I yes, see sir. that Lieutenant Milan's uh, screen currently is black, which may mean he has difficulty with the connection. Lieutenant Milan, are you there, sir? I'm not hearing any response. There he is, okay. Looks like Lieutenant Milan has uh, requested IT assistance from uh, someone else present there. Lieutenant Milan, can you hear you? I'm not hearing anybody. There he is, okay. Tim Milan's screen appears to be frozen at the moment. Okay, I'm gone. Lieutenant Milan, are you back, sir? 
I am here. You hear me? We can. Yes, sir. We can. Okay, Mr. Uh, Lieutenant Milan, are you able to see the uh, the exhibit um, employee exhibit sixteen that I'm showing? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, very good. All right, Mr. Wilson, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Showman. Um, Lieutenant, uh, this is just uh, uh, generally the beginning. There is one preparatory statute, but this is where the sum and substance of the Law Enforcement Officer Bill of Rights commences. Is this the, uh, the document or similar to what you recall discussing or reviewing with Sergeant Estes uh, when you took over? Yes. I'm sorry, your answer broke up. Uh, yes, sir. Could you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. And Mr. Shulman, we can uh, maybe set that one aside. Uh, thank you, sir. Do you, you don't have any other exhibit at this time? Uh, not a, no other questions on this exhibit at that time. That's fine. Okay. All right. Um, That's fine. Okay. All right. Getting an echo, but um, Lieutenant Milan, um, did you re ever review the charging affidavit in this matter? I did. Okay. Um, would that have been a document that you wish would have been provided to you at the outset of your investigation? Yes, sir. Okay. And similarly, uh, would you have looked at the call history as it relates to uh, this matter? I would, yes. Okay. Um, were you aware that Lieutenant, I'm sorry, were you aware that Officer Malero was dispatched to that location, that being North Orange Avenue and West New York Avenue on September 14, 2017? Yes, sir. Okay. By that I mean, in other words, he wasn't uh, just driving around in his police cruiser. He was actually dispatched to that location. You're, you're right. Right. Correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And if you uh, would, Mr. Uh, Shulman, would you put up City Exhibit 2, the single page? Uh, it should be pages 8 and 9 in total of the exhibit. This is City Exhibit 2. Is that what you wanted? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I am terribly sorry, Mr. Shulman. I meant uh, Union Exhibit 2. Okay. I apologize. Thank you, sir. And Lieutenant, let us know when you can see that. I can see that. Okay. And you see there that um, uh, on the second, uh, about the middle of the page where the word entry is, sir, you see that? Yes, sir. Okay. You see that it says homeless WM yelling at passersby? Is there any way we can actually uh, make this a little bit bigger? Okay. Please. Thank you. There it is. That's a lot better. Thank you. Yes, sir. And, and do you see, Lieutenant, uh, uh, out from the word entry at 1929-43, homeless WM yelling at passersby? I do. Okay. And that was actually, uh, it, it represents on this, this dispatch log, this, this was a 911 call, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And so you, you would have uh, had this as a part of the documents that you reviewed as well, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And thank you, Mr. Shulman. We can set that exhibit aside as well. Um, now, in the course of his duties as a police officer, and I understand you're a lieutenant, sir, uh, when a police officer such as Officer Malero is dispatched on a 911 call, as we just saw, you would have reasonably expected him to respond to that call and investigate the matter, correct? Correct. In fact, he would have been derelict or deficient 
in his duties if he had ignored that call and not responded, correct? That's correct. Okay. So Officer Malero, along with Officer Turner, who was uh, a trainee at the time, responded to that call. Are you aware of that, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you watched the video uh, of this matter, correct, of this incident? I have. And that was from the body-worn camera, or BWC, uh, worn by Officer Malero, correct? Correct. Okay. And I think from what we understand, it's about a six minute, 58 second, just shy of seven minute video. Is that your understanding, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. You said a moment ago that uh, something about a 20 second video. Do you recall saying that, sir? I did. Have you ever yourself seen this 20 second video? I have not. Are you aware of where it may exist? No, sir. Are, um, are you aware that the union has made a request to be provided such 20 second video and we've been told that no such video exists? I wasn't aware of that, um, but I, I've never seen the video myself. So this short video that you mentioned uh, you yourself had never seen it, correct? Correct. Uh, has the chief or the uh, deputy chief or anyone in, in upper command of the police department ever told you that they saw such a 20 second video? My understanding when I first began this, in, uh, this investigation is that the 20 second video was actually uh, seen by uh, the, uh, the chief and his command staff. But you, the assigned investigator, were never given such a video, never or nor never saw such a video. Correct. And isn't there a responsibility within uh, not only the city of Deland Police Department, but by the FDLE to maintain uh, uh, video evidence? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that question again? Yes. Isn't there an obligation within the city of police? City of Deland Police Department policy, as well as the FDLE, to maintain video evidence if it exists. Uh, yes, sir. Because we know we have this the approximately seven minute video. We still have that, correct? Correct. I want to uh, turn your attention to uh, it's one of the new exhibits um and that would be just a moment uh trader you'll go to exhibit twenty uh six Now, I just want to focus on this exhibit. Let me know when you can see it, Lieutenant. I can see it. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to come back to this exhibit in a few minutes, but uh, for another reason. But uh, this is a document we received from a public records request, and it appears to show that the uh, a video was deleted. This one pertains to the uh, interview of office of, of Mr. Allen Kidd. Have you ever seen this document before, sir? The 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 document as far as the video with uh, interviewing Mr. Kidd. Yes. Yes, sir. I have. Okay. Um, if you look on the right side in the middle of the page, it says deletion scheduled for February first, twenty nineteen. Do you see that, sir? I do not. Is there any way we can make this a little bit bigger, please? Yes. And thank you, Mr. Shulman. Thank you. Do you see the, uh, uh, can you see it now where it says deletion scheduled for February 1st, 2019? 
I do. Okay. Do you have any reason to doubt that this document produced by the city pursuant to a public records request uh, represents that the interview of Mr. Kids, the video of that was deleted? It was. Okay. Now, I, I, I say that in reference to, we haven't seen such a document like this for the alleged 22nd video. And you're telling us you didn't see the 22nd video of the encounter between Officer Malero and Mr. Kidd, but you've just heard about it. Is that correct? That's correct. And have you ever seen a document such as this as it relates to the 22nd video being deleted? No. Okay. So many, uh, thank you. Um, that's all we need for now on this exhibit, Mr. Tillman. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go back now to in time frame of, of Officer Malero and Officer Turner coming up on the scene at uh, New York and Orange Avenue and confronting uh, Mr. Kidd. Um, you said you've watched the video, uh, and I believe you watched it more than once, correct? Yes, sir, I did. Um, when Officer Malero asked Mr. Kidd, if he was homeless, would you agree that that was based on what he had been told in the dispatch call? It could be, yes. Okay. There's nothing inappropriate or contrary to police practice if that's what the dispatcher had said for Officer Malero to ask that question, Mr. Kidd, was there? Is there anything inappropriate? Yes, sir. No, sir. Okay. Um, and Officer Malero wrote in the charging affidavit, which was our exhibit one that you said you saw, that Mr. Kidd was, quote, highly intoxicated and smelled of alcoholic beverages. Um, you have no reason to dispute Officer Malero's uh, version of what he observed in the field, do you? Can you speak the fact that the gentleman was intoxicated? Yes, sir. Well, for what it, looking at the video myself, um, it doesn't appear for the guy to be for the uh, gentleman to, you know, he was coherent. Um, he was answering and responding to everything that Officer Malero was saying. So, I, I, whether he had the order of alcoholic beverage on him, um, I, I couldn't testify to that. Okay. Yeah, you obviously weren't there, so you couldn't. Uh, your sense of smell, you wouldn't have been able to. To determine what Officer Malero smelled, correct? Correct. Now, did you ultimately interview uh, Mr. Kidd? I did. And do you recall when uh, or what day? I'm sorry. Um, Officer Malan is just a little muffled when he when he speaks so um i didn't get the answer to that did you ultimately interview mr kidd i didn't understand the answer i said i did okay, okay so thank you so um hold on just a second so lieutenant milan um recognize i gather you, uh, you're at home in quarantine um are, are you able to take your mask off or is there someone present with you that that would require you to leave them. I can. I, I, I can take my mask off. It's just it, I was told, you know, obviously by the doctors that we should maintain our, uh, our mask on at all times, but I'll go ahead and remove it and make it easier. No, sir. I don't want you to do anything your doctors, uh, anything against your doctor's orders. You, no, no, understood. Understood. I can, I can, uh, when I answer, I just, what I'll do is just, I'll just remove the mask. That way it can be a lot clearer and I'll just put it right back. No problem. Okay. Um, would that help? Madam reporter, will that help? Uh, I mean, I don't know that it's really the mask. I think it's just the connection. He's just a little muffled, so. Understood. Okay. And um, I, when we're talking technical issues, uh, is Lieutenant Milan, you're coming through very loud on my end, which might be muffling your response. I don't know if anyone else is. Yes. So yeah, maybe it's, if you could turn your volume down just a tiny bit. So, and, and I, I gather from 
seeing him lean into the screen that he's having difficulty hearing us. Um, but Lieutenant Milan, so that you know, you are coming through very, very loud. So if, um, if I do so, I won't be able to hear. Okay. Okay. So b b if you can take a look, do you have on your screen, do you have a, a little microphone in the lower left hand corner within the Zoom window? Okay. Mm -hmm. You see the little left, the little up arrow next to the microphone? Do you see that? There, one of the one of the items there is um, audio settings. If you could click on that, and under microphone, you have input level. And you see the volume underneath that. If you can move that little button slider towards the left, it will decrease the volume of your speech. And then, do you see the one above it where it says the word speaker and there's a volume there? If you move that slider to the right, that will make the, what you hear louder, so that that may solve both of our concerns. Does that make it sound better? Yes, you are. You are not only are you a little bit quieter, your speech is less um, distorted. How can, can you hear us well? I can hear you well. Yes, sir. Excellent. Very good. I think Thank you. they have I solved the you. issue. Let, let's go forward. Mr. Wilson, you were just asking uh, uh, the lieutenant uh, questions about uh, the incident with Mr. Kidd, the interview yes. of Mr. Kidd. Um, I believe you told us that you did interview Mr. Kidd, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you recall when you interviewed him? I believe it was September 27th. Uh, of what year? Eight, uh, 19. Okay, I'll help you out. I, it was 2018. I want to see if 20. you... And, and specifically, we can turn, if you would, um, to... City, I'm sorry, Union Exhibit 15. Union Exhibit 15 that begins at page 71, Mr. Shulman. Yep, give me a sec. Do y'all have that document in front of you now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you can see it, Lieutenant Milan? I can. Okay. Do you have any reason to doubt that this is the date that you interviewed? Um, that is correct. No, okay. I do not have any doubt. Okay. So by way of timeline, we're talking, this is approximately a year and almost two weeks after the actual incident of November 14, 2017, correct? Yes, sir. And... You were a lieutenant uh, by this time, correct? On, um, yes, sir. Okay. You don't have any reason to doubt, do you, that Mr. Uh, that Officer Malero was continuing to function as a police officer from September 14, 2017, the day of this incident, up and until he was placed on a paid administrative leave in late July of 2018, do you? Can you repeat that again? You have any reason to dispute that Officer Malero was uh, functioning as a police officer for the city of Deland from the date of the incident all the way up and until he was placed on paid administrative leave in late July of 2018? I do not. Okay, and you were a Lieutenant, meaning you were in the chain of command above him, correct? Yes, sir. You didn't hear of any uh, complaints, problems, or issues of any kind about his performance in the field during that nine-month period of September 14, 20, September 15, 2017, up until he was placed on paid administrative leave, did you? 
again, I was never his supervisor, but I've, I did not hear anything as far as rumor goes. Is that what you're asking? Correct. Correct. Okay. And you said you weren't a supervisor. You did serve as a supervisor for a period of time, didn't you? Um, I was under training as a sergeant at the time. So you, and he was under you at that time? Um, I believe maybe for 15 days. Okay. You didn't have any issues with him uh, during those couple of weeks while he was under you, did you? No, I did not. Okay. Um, now, were you aware that a letter had come in uh, to the city uh, from an attorney representing uh, Mr. Kidd prior to you being assigned to do the internal affairs investigation? I did not know. Okay. No one in upper command or anybody within the city informed you of that prior to assigning you to the investigation? No, sir. Okay. Do you have any knowledge as as to why a, the letter that came in from Mr. Kidd's attorney in May of 18, why you were not assigned to commence an investigation in this matter for another four months, not until September? Okay, I understand that I, not, I, didn't, I, I wasn't in charge of professional standards at that time. When this letter first came in, I wasn't assigned. I was actually assigned for, to recruiting. Okay. But again, I'm just asking if you have any knowledge as to why there was a gap between the letter from Mr. Kidd's attorney, uh, which uh, Mr. Shulman, if you'll go to Union Exhibit 5, Do you have that in front of you? Uh, can you see that, Lieutenant? Yes. Okay. This is the letter from the attorney representing Mr. Kidd dated May 24 of 2018. Um, it's got a received handwritten date up in the upper right corner. Uh, do you know whose handwriting that is? I do not. Okay. Had you, seen, had you ever seen this letter prior to being assigned to conduct the IA in this matter? No. I'm sorry? I have not, no. Okay. Um, I have highlighted a sentence there I want to ask you about under statement of the claim, uh, the second full paragraph, where it says, we have re enclosed a copy of the video depicting the officer's unreasonable arrest and detention of Mr. Kidd. Do you see that, sir? I see that. Do you know, uh, were you responsible as the as a lieutenant for responding to requests for copies of videos of officers in the field? Can you phrase that question again? I'm not, I'm not sure. You're... Okay. Was that within your area of responsibility to provide a copy of the video uh, to Mr. Kidd's attorney? Did you have any role in that? I did not. Okay. Um, and the reason I just want for timeline purposes to ask you about this, you were not tasked with conducting the IA until several months after this letter. Is that correct? That, that's correct. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thorne. We can take that uh, document down. Um, Um, I want to now go to Exhibit 9, uh, uh, Union Exhibit 9. Uh, let me know when you can see that, Lieutenant. I can see that. Okay. Now, uh, I know there's a sticky note covering a, a portion of that, but, um, uh, and this comes from Sergeant Estes. I believe you told us um, earlier this morning that he was your predecessor in professional standards or internal affairs. Is that right? Correct. Um, were you provided this document 
in the transition between Sergeant Estes and yourself? Yes. Okay. Did you have any role in determining these four potential policy violations of city policy or police department policy that are listed here? No. Okay. Do you know who uh, determined that these were four potential police department violations to be investigated? I would assume it would be Sergeant Estes. Okay. In your role now as Lieutenant over internal affairs, is that within your scope of responsibility to determine the uh, allegations that the actions may meet? Yes. Okay. So when this was handed off to you, uh, this matter uh, uh, regarding Officer Malero, was it within your authority as you understood it to accept these four potential violations out of the gate or could you have rejected them and commenced under looking at different violations? You Again, I asked the, can you hear me? Yes, sir, go ahead. So um, you're basically asking whether it was my responsibility to go and um, review these um, allegations, these violations, possible violations um, I did not do that at the time. Um, again, I had not done anything as far as the investigation. So I wanted to get the investigation started to see exactly for myself what if they actually, you know. Um, okay. So am I, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm summarizing what I understand your answer to be, and if I am, please correct me. Are you saying that although you received this document, when Sergeant Estes was, I guess you said retiring and you were taking over IA as Lieutenant, although you had this document, you weren't bound to necessarily look at these four potential violations. All right, so I take that back. So yes, I do look at them. And if obviously, you know, I look at them, um, I kind of see whether, you know, I watch the video and see whether this actually falls within that, you know, scope of a possible violation. So I do look at them. I, I was thinking that you asked whether I changed them or I was looking to change them. Okay. So you commenced your investigation with looking at some of the documents you testified to today, the charging affidavit, the, the call report, et cetera, and you, your task and the video you told us, correct? Correct. Um, and this is dated August 2nd. So we're about two and a half months after the letter from uh, the attorney for Mr. Kidd. And my question there is, again, you don't know why there was a lag time, if you will, or delay between the letter threatening lo a lawsuit from Mr. Kidd's attorney and you being tasked with an investigation. Is that Correct. Right? Okay. Um, did you play any role in the decision by Chief Umberger to place Officer Malero on paid administrative leave during the investigation? No, sir. Okay. If, uh, just for the record, I, you don't need to pull it up. I was referring to us, uh, Union Exhibit 7 that placed, were you aware that Officer Malero was placed on paid administrative leave on July 26, 2018? Are you asking me the question whether I was aware? Yes, sir. That he was placed on administrative leave? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was okay. made aware. Okay. So when you uh, were conducting, by the time you were conducting your investigation, Officer Malero was uh, on paid leave. He was at home, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, If you would, uh, 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 and now, uh, uh, Mr. Shulman, if you'll put up Union Exhibit 6. Let me know when you see that, sir. 
I can see it. Okay. A similar question about that I asked you about the letter from the attorney for Mr. Kidd. Have you ever seen this letter dated July 11, 2018 from the um, city's insurance carrier attorney, a man by the name of Sean Conahan, to insurance carrier representative Lance McCarraher? Have you ever seen this letter, sir? I have. Okay. Did you have this letter and its analysis at the time you commenced your investigation or did you only review it after you finished your investigation? This was actually provided to me after I had started the, um... so can you zoom on this for me again, please? I can't really see the dates on there. Okay. All right, does that help, sir? All right, it is, does, thank you. Okay. And you said this letter was provided to you at some point during your investigation, is that right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And did you read this letter cover to cover? I think it's about 10 pages long. I did read, yes. I, I'm sorry, actually, correction, it's 12. I did. Okay. And were you aware then, at the, I think you said you got this, you received this, prior to reaching your own conclusions in the AIA report, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And are you aware that um, this attorney uh, for the city's insurance carrier had uh, addressed the, in his legal analysis, the legality of the stop and the legality of the arrest in his opinion, in his legal opinion? Yes. And were you aware that this attorney had concluded in this document that he found both the, the, the stop and the arrest to be legally well-grounded? I did read that, yes, sir. Okay. And I understand that in your own IA report that we're gonna to get to, you ultimately uh, concluded on uh, one of the allegations that you did not believe or that you concluded that there was uh, excessive force used, uh, or, or I'm sorry, officers shall not use any force more than necessary. You felt that he used more force than necessary. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So you, you acknowledge that your, um, your conclusions differed with the uh, attorney for the city's carrier, correct? Correct. Okay, and just for the record, sir, you don't have a law degree, is that correct? Correct. Okay, um, you are a, you have been certified by the state of Florida as a law enforcement officer, correct? And, correct. Okay. Um, now, in regards to the interview of Mr. Kidd, do you recall where you interviewed Mr. Kidd? I mean, physically where? At his residence. Okay. If you'll turn now uh, to uh, Exhibit 23. Uh, and Mr. Shulman, thank you again for your assistance with this. That should be pages, page 99. I'm sorry, sir. I'm at, I'm at Exhibit 25. My apologies. 25. My eyes are. Council, that's one of the new ones. Yes, sir. Okay. Just a put my glasses on here. <laughs> I saw three. There we go. Okay. Is that the Thank one you're you. looking for, Council? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Shulman. Yep. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant, let me know when you can see that. I can see it. Okay. Um, this appears to be the. Uh, history report for that particular call on that day. Uh, would you agree with that, sir? Uh, yes, sir. And is this a document that you're uh, that you have customarily seen in the course of your duties as a law enforcement officer at Deland? Yes. Okay. This indicates that uh, you went to the address there on White House 
uh, Whitehurst Road. Do you see that, sir? I do. And it looks like Joshua Santos was also present. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And if my math is right, it looks like you got there at 1145 and you see that it says clear at 1220. You see that? Yes, sir. sir. I see that. So you were there for about, um, what, 35 minutes? Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any reason to dispute or, or disagree that this is the call log related to the interview that you and Sergeant Santos conducted of Mr. Kidd at his residence on September 27, 2018? No, sir. Okay. And now we'll go to the actual transcript that Mr. Shulman graciously put up, which was our Exhibit 15 um, a little while ago. Okay. Do um, you see that, sir? I do. Not to split hairs here, but it looks like maybe your time was off by 14 minutes in the first sentence with uh, the time that you actually arrived at his residence. Would you agree with that? You see you have 11.59 a.m. And I respond to that, that the fact that <clears throat> it could have been the fact that uh, Sergeant Santos didn't call out with it until that particular time. Okay. So in other words, if you called in, um, I'm not sure what the what time it actually stayed, um, but not necessarily say that he actually called it in at the time that we actually made contact with the uh, Mr. Kidd. Okay. In addition to that, in addition to that, by him closing the call in itself, it could have been the fact that once we left, he actually closed it out after the fact. Okay. But in terms of which was likely more accurate, would it be the call history, Exhibit 25, as opposed to what your transcription says here on Exhibit 15? Again, you're meaning that the, uh, trans the, the time that I have is not... It's not comparable to the time that we it was actually documented in the call history uh, of the arrival time. Is that what you're asking? Yes, sir. The call history uh, would be deemed the more accurate of the two. Is that would you agree with that? Again, again, and it all depends on whether the officer, Sergeant Santos, whether he actually uh, called it out at the time that we actually made it there, or he waited till we actually made contact with the person. So I, I couldn't tell you whether that's you know. Okay. Time. It shows that we obviously were there. So. Okay. And you, you don't have any reason to dispute you were there for about thirty to thirty-five minutes. Um. Again, I, I don't recall how long I was out there. Um. I know I was there for a few minutes. Yes. Um. But I couldn't tell you whether it was thirty, thirty-five minutes. Okay. Um. I'd like to move into evidence at this time. Exhibit twenty-five. Union Exhibit twenty-five, which is the the new one. Um. All right. Any objection? Not from the city. Okay. It's admitted as Union Exhibit 25. Thank you, Mr. Shulman. Um, all right. Uh, I want to uh, spend just a, a little bit of time now on the transcript, uh, Exhibit 15. Um, and again, um, it appears that we did have a video at one time of your interview. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And that's the one that we looked at earlier, which was exhibit 26. And I, I hate to ask you, Mr. Shulman, if you could look at that just for a moment, just for admit, uh, so I can seek admission of it. Uh, uh, do you have any reason to doubt this is the, again, the video, this is a record of the video of your interview, yours and Sergeant Santos's interview of Mr. Kidd uh, being deleted. Do you have any reason to dispute that? No, sir. Okay. I'd like to move for the uh, admission of Exhibit 26, Union Exhibit 26. Any objection? No objection. All right, it's admitted as okay. Union Exhibit 26. Yes, okay. So as we sit here and as Arbitrator Shulman will be tasked with evaluating all of this evidence. I just wanna make sure I'm clear and we're all clear, Lieutenant. There is no video of the interview. What we have is this transcript, which is exhibit 15, that 
purports to be an accurate account of your interview with Mr. Kidd. Is that correct? Correct. That's all we have because the video no longer exists. Correct. Okay. Now, the on page two, isn't it true that in this transcript, at least, it appears that Mr. Kidd, near the bottom of page two. I'm sorry, counsel, which I'm exhibit? Sorry. Uh, uh, exhibit 15. You want page two? Of, yes, sir. Um, Hold on, let me get there. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, near the bottom of page two, where it begins the entry of Mr. Kidd, third third entry from the bottom. Do you see where it says, uh, I was getting pissed off and I didn't understand why they were even stopping me because I hadn't done anything. Do you see that, sir? I do not. Where are we looking at again? I'm sorry. Uh, near the, uh, the third entry from the bottom uh, where it says, Mr. Kidd, I don't know. You see that? See where it begins, Mr. Kidd, I don't know. Um, one second. Yes. Okay. And then uh, down a couple of sentences below that uh, says he was, then he says to move again. He was just being real aggressive with me. And I stood up to give him my ID and I said something to him because I was getting pissed off. Do you see that, sir? I see that. Okay. So Mr. Kidd ad admitted to you and Sergeant Santos that he was losing his temper, correct? Yes. And at the end of that uh, response, that same paragraph, it says he didn't like me challenging him at all, correct? It does say that, yes, sir. So Mr. You and Sergeant Santos were now being told an admission by Mr. Kidd that he's acknowledging he was challenging Officer Nalerman, correct? Yes, sir. And you told us a little while ago, you acknowledged that Officer Malero was fulfilling his duties as a police officer in responding to a dispatch 911 call. Uh, and he would have been derelict in his duties if he didn't respond to that call, correct? Correct. And an officer in the field, just as you have been in your career, correct? Yes, sir. When you're out in the field and you're, you come across the suspect that matches the description, you have a right to conduct an investigation, correct? Yes, sir, to a point, <clears throat> excuse me. You have a right to ask questions and try to gain information uh, to determine <clears throat> the basis behind the 911 call, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you even followed up with uh, Mr. Kidd and said, when you say challenging him, what exactly did you mean? So that certainly was a, a trigger in your own mind, wasn't it? That here you have a, a citizen acknowledging that he was challenging the office. I wanted to clarify what he meant by challenging. <clears throat> and if you go on to the next page, Mr. Shulman, um, At the bottom of the page, uh, this being page three of the transcript, you recall, you, you see here, you ask him, do you remember clenching your fist? And he says, no, I don't. Do you see that, sir? I do. And proceeding on to the top of the next page. At all, this is you asking, at all, you never clenched your fist. Mr. Kidd saying, I am not saying I didn't. I'm just saying I don't remember it. You see that, sir? I do. So Mr. <laughs> Mr. Kidd never denied that he clenched his fist, did he? He never said he did. He never said, yeah, correct. And you're familiar with the use, what's called the use of force matrix. Uh, yes, sir. Through FDLE and your police training, correct? Yes, sir. And the clenching of a fist would be considered what on the matrix, use of force matrix level from your training and experience? It can be a uh, passive. Okay. Can it also be considered 
an, an active physical. Again, can it? Yes. Okay. That's where it's left in the discretion of the officer's judgment in the field, correct? Correct. So if Officer Malero, and I believe you say later on in your report that we're going to get to, the BWC angle doesn't show uh, Mr. Kidd's hands or fists, correct? Correct. So even when you conducted your IA, you could not definitively refute Officer Malero saying that Mr. Kidd clenched his fist, correct? Correct. And you've got Mr. Kidd himself not denying that he clenched his fist. He just says, I don't recall, correct? Correct. And you, had, you will agree as an investigator that someone saying they don't recall is different than saying they deny something. Correct. So an officer, you've got an officer now that in your own report and the BWC acknowledges you can't see Mr. Kidd's hands, whether he's clenching. You would agree that Officer Malero, if he believed this man was clenching his fist and, and, and possibly about to strike him, would have been within his uh, law enforcement officer right to take defensive action against that, correct? Correct. Um, yes. To, again, to a point, obviously, if somebody's actually clench, clenching their, fin, their fist, you would, uh, uh, as an officer, I would step back, obviously, to kind of get a good distance between myself and the subject. Okay. And I understand from this video, it's hard to tell, you, but you do recall Officer Malero saying that this man uh, came up on him and approached him, correct? Yes, he did say that. Okay. And in this same uh, passage at the top of the page or this answer by Mr. Kidd, after he says, I'm just saying, I don't remember it. He says, but I was getting angry at the time. Do you see that, sir? I do see that. So Mr. Kidd was acknowledging that he, he lost his temper, correct? That he was getting angry. Yes, sir. And by the way, I should have asked at the outset, when you came up upon his residence that day, September 27, 2018, to interview him, he was, he was not the most welcoming to you and Sergeant Santos, was he? Uh, I wouldn't say not welcome. Um, he was more than cooperative with me at the time. Was it? Didn't he ask you why you were there and got upset and defended? Actually, what he's, uh, if I recall right, he basically said, is, is there a reason why you're here? And I tried to say, at that time, I took the opportunity to explain the reason why I was there. Were you aware that he was in the process of signing a release uh, and receiving uh, a settlement check at the time you went out to his house? Was I aware of the, can you repeat that again? Were you aware that he was in the process of signing a release and receiving a settlement check from the city as a matter of fact at the time that uh i went there i i was under the i was uh told that it was uh a done deal he had already signed in fact uh that's a good segue for just a moment if you'll turn to uh union exhibit here which exhibit council uh, 12, page 42. Um, and it, and if, if you'll scroll to, uh, sc uh, scroll to the last page, which I think is the fourth page. Looks like, uh, can you see that, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Okay, this was signed on September 18, 2018. Do you see that? Yes by Mr. Kidd before a notary. You went out nine days later to interview him, correct? Yes, sir. And didn't he say something to the effect when you first came up, Mr. Kidd? I thought everything was done or something like that? Uh, I believe so, yes, sir. I, I don't recall to be honest, but yeah, it okay. could have been, I, I'm not sure. 
In fact, you were you were instructed to hold off on interviewing him until after the release was signed, weren't you? Yes, sir. So after Mr. Kidd signs a release, gets his settlement money, that's when you're given the green light to go out and question him, correct? Correct. All right. Um, the um, just one last question on the deletion of the the, the video that uh, our exhibit twenty six. We don't have to look at the exhibit, but I just want to ask you a question. Do you know what this what the time frame is after um, from the moment in time a video is recorded until it's scheduled for deletion? In other words, is there a certain amount of time? I believe it's ninety days. Okay. If it's considered evidence, though, in a particular case, is there a different time frame, or is it not deleted at all? If you know, if if it's actually marked as evidence, it's not deleted. Okay. So at the time, is it fair to say at the time that this video was permitted to be deleted of the interview of by you and Sergeant Santos of Mr. Kidd? it must have been thought that it was not going to be evidence? Correct. But obviously it has turned into being evidence, correct? Well, so can I clarify that? Um, so it is not standard process for internal affairs to video record an interview. The reason why this video even existed was because we have a policy in place that states that anytime we make contact uh, with a citizen, um, a bond cam shall be activated. With that being said, Sergeant Santos, um, I've never requested Sergeant Santos to record. He did so because of policy. Uh, so it's not a normal process for us to uh, record um, an interview. Now you do have the subject, uh, correct? Not video record, no, sir. Okay. Do you, do you audio record them? Yes, sir. Okay. I think that was a yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So just one last thing on the Transcript of the interview, Exhibit 15, page 4. Thank you, Mr. Shulman. Uh, on page 4, I'll, I'll, it says uh, in the middle of the page, again, Mr. Kidd, uh, you see where it says, no, as a matter of fact, my lawyer told me. You see that? Uh, yes, sir. I see that. Okay. Again, Mr. Kidd uses the word, I, but I was getting irritated as time went on. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Okay. So is it fair to say you, you acknowledge, Lieutenant, that Mr. Kidd admitted that he, had, he was getting irritated, agitated, angry, and could not deny that he may have clenched his fists? Correct? Yes. Now, there was a little bit of confusion, I think, on day one that I think may now be able to be clarified um, as to whether there, when you interviewed Officer Malero. Um, if, if you'll turn, uh, Mr. Shulman, to Exhibit 14, Union Exhibit 14. All right. Do you see that, sir? I do. Um, do you recall when you interviewed Officer Malero that he was given the opportunity to review uh, all statements and, and documents that had been gathered up to that point? Yes, sir. And I believe he w uh, came with uh, former uh, union business agent Bob Walker. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And they were permitted to review the video and 
transcript of at that time of Mr. Kidd's interview. Is that correct? Correct. The reason I asked that on the first sentence, you this is you speaking. You said I'm Lieutenant Milan with the Deland Police Department. Today is Wednesday, September third. Isn't it true that that should really be October third? Yes, sir. Okay. So for the record, uh, uh, it's the first time I've had to ask you about this. Correct. First time you and I've discussed this case. Yes. Uh, you're telling the arbitrator and all of us that you misspoke on the record because I was listening to the audio and you clearly say September. You really misspoke and it was supposed to be October? Yes, sir. Okay. And who transcribes the, uh, the statements or did at that time for the city? Rebecca Ackerman. Rebecca Ackerman. Okay. So this was not her mistake. This was just you misspoke. Yes. Okay. So there were not two uh, interviews of Mr. Kidd. There was still just the one on September 27, followed by the interview of Officer Malero on October 3rd, about a week later. Is that correct? That's, yes, sir. Okay. But, okay. Um, And let me know at any time if we need to take a break, by the way. Uh, all right. Um, I want to now turn to what we presented as new Exhibit 27. And ask you just a few questions about this, sir. Let me know when you see it, sir. I can see it. Okay. Um, this is a document that we, for the record, we received following day one, uh, uh, pursuant to a public records request. Are you familiar with a document such as this? That's an uh, an axon evidence audit trail, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, this appears to be um, an an audit trail of the video of the incident of September uh, 14, 2017. Uh, do you have any reason to dispute that, sir? No, sir. Okay. Now in the categories, if you see on the left column, about a third of the way down under evidence ID, do you see the word non-evidentiary? I do. Do you know who or who would have made the designation that this video of the incident between Officer Molero and Mr. Kidd was deemed non-evidentiary? Again, if it's not marked as evidence, it's going to be marked that automatically prompts it to non-evidentiary. Okay. And this shows that the person that uploaded it was Joshua Santos. Do you see that, sir? Yes, sir. And would that have been within his customary role as a sergeant? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, it, remember I asked you earlier this morning about, uh, and you acknowledge that you had watched this video more than once. Do you recall that, sir? Yes, sir. And again, when I say video, I'm, I'm for clarity, I'm not talking about the video of the interview of Mr. Kidd. This is the, the six minute and 58, 59 seconds, just shy of seven minute uh, video of the encounter between Officer Malera and Mr. Kidd. Are you aware of that, sir? Uh, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that again? Yeah, I'm referring to the video of the encounter of September 14, 2017 between M Officer Malera and Mr. Kidd. Okay? Okay. It looks like, by our estimation, the first time you reviewed this video on page one here, under Brian Kearney, near the bottom, it says Juan Milan for line number 10. Council, what exhibit are you referring uh, the to? The same one. I just scroll a little bit down. Sorry. See on line 10, it says Juan Milan. Do you see that, sir? I do. Okay. Do you have any reason to dispute that you first watched the video of the encounter between Officer Malero and Mr. Kidd on September 
September 27th. If I'm not mistaken, I don't believe this is the one for, I think, I believe this, the one that is, uh, the one that we're looking at right now okay. is, is the one with the interview with Kid. Okay. Okay. So this is the one for Mr. Kid. Correct. This is the interview okay. where Josh Santos was present at the time that I interviewed Mr. Kid. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you for that clarification. It looks like uh, by our, by, by my count, and it covers the next page of this same exhibit and the following, uh, the third page, that your name is on here 34 times. Yes, sir. Um, of accessing this particular video. Do you have any Correct. reason to dispute that you accessed and or viewed the video, which you've clarified is the video of the interview with Mr. Kidd 34 times? Yes. I mean, you don't disagree with that? I do not disagree with it, no. Okay. Is that, uh, I mean, why would you have uh, felt the uh, need to review that video that many times, if you know? Okay, so the reason why I actually review that video so many times is because once I returned back to the police department, I took the audio recording and I turned it into Rebecca Ackerman so that it can be transcribed. In order for me to stay on a timely manner, I decided to look at the video to kind of get ahead on my narrative. Okay. So that's the reason why you see me actually looking at this video so many times because I had already given that the audio to Rebecca Ackerman so that she can actually transcribe. Meantime, I went back looking at the video so that I can get started on my narrative um, so that I can complete my report in a timely manner. Do you know if the audio of the interview with Mr. Kidd, not the video, but the audio of your interview with Mr. Kidd is still maintained? Uh, no, sir. It's been deleted as well? Um, to be honest with you, sir, I'm, I'm not a, yes, and I'm not sure how that actually happened. Okay. It could have been when I actually handed it over to Rebecca Ackerman. Again, I'm not trying to put blame on anybody. I'm just saying that it could have been the process when I actually forwarded that to Rebecca Ackerman. Um, or it could have been the fact that I actually recorded over it as I continue to do interviews. Okay. I just want to make sure we all, and particularly Mr. Shulman, understand your answer. You're saying that you don't dispute that the audio no longer exists. It's been deleted or recorded over, but you don't know how it happened. Correct. Okay. And if you'll, uh, Mr. Shulman, if you can scroll down to line 51 on this document. 51 shows uh, deleted on this video, February 1st, 2019. Do you see that, sir? I do. And I think that comports with what we've now looked at as exhibit uh, 25 that's been admitted into evidence. Would you agree with that? That's the, uh, the black screen that showed deleted February 1st? Yes, sir. Okay. Or is that exhibit 26, I believe? That was Exhibit 26. So this document um, um, tracks that you viewed this video many times, and then it was uh, ultimately deleted. Is it fair to say, Lieutenant, that if you had believed from your 34 times looking at this video, that this would be necessary evidence or uh, evidence related to your IA, you would not have deleted it? So can I, uh, so to clarify that again, I, we never, our standard practice is not to record any interviews. That wasn't done for evidentiary purposes. That was done because Sergeant Santos was following policies uh, and procedures to where he made contact with a citizen, um, which it reads, you bet you shall have your uh, body cam activated. I've never requested Sergeant Santos to record the incident for the purposes of maintaining it for evidentiary purposes. I understand that. I understand that it, you, you've made it clear you don't customarily record um, witness interviews by audio or video. Uh, but once you have it is my question. And by the time of October 3rd of 2018, line 48, the last time you accessed it, 
you you were uh, in the process of writing your or on the verge of writing your IA report, correct? Yes. So, regardless of whether Sergeant Santos po followed policy and recorded something that he didn't have to record, the point is it got deleted. It did. And let's now uh, turn to the actual um, actual reports. Um, but, 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 but let me ask you a prefatory question about that. Were you under some pressure, Lieutenant, to get your IA done? Well, we have a time frame. Our policy says, I believe at the time, was 90 days to complete a uh, internal affairs investigation. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, I had emails from uh, uh, Officer Malero at the time that he was concerned no one's actually getting back to him. Um, he wanted to get this done because he was receiving phone calls from coworkers basically stating negative things about what was going to happen to him. Um, so was I under pressure? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you recall getting some emails uh, about where you were in the process? I'd, I'd be honest with you, I don't recall the, the emails. Okay. Uh, let me have you turn to find it here. we we'll go to Exhibit 10, uh, Union Exhibit 10. Who is, uh, you, do you have that, sir? Do you see it? I do, yes, sir. Who is Maria Becker? She was the uh, safety administrator for the city of the land. Okay. And she starts off with saying, hi, and this is an email to you, correct? Yes, sir. You recall receiving this email? I, yes, I, yes, I do. She says, hi, I know you are being pressured, and I am so sorry. You see that, sir? I do see that. Who was pressuring you? Again, um, going back, you know, I have to update, you know, they'll ask me as far as, updating, as far as, you know, where I'm at with my report. And the pressure that I was feeling was, you know, again, Officer Malero contacted me. He sent me an email basically asking about, um, you know, how long it's going to take because he was actually concerned. That was to me a pressure because I, I believe that, you know, I, I can understand the pressure he was under at the time. Um, in addition to that, I was looking at the time frame that I have, um, and at the time at the policy meant 90 days. So, um, I wasn't being pressured in that particular way, um, you know, with time frames and obviously responding to, uh, or trying to get officer Malero, um, to, to get them in, to get them interviewed. Okay. But I couldn't do that because of the fact that, um, I wasn't given the green light to interview uh, Mr. Kidd because of the uh, civil litigation that was going on. Okay. And, and you had written to Ms. Uh, Becker earlier that same day, in fact, about a little over a half hour prior to her reply that we just looked at here and asked her about whether they had any information from Mr. Kidd at the bottom of the same page. Is that correct, sir? I can't see the bottom of the page. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you recall writing to Ms. Becker and asking her on September 12th whether they had any further information regarding this? Yes, sir. And what you were specifically asking about, isn't it true, uh, you were trying to find out the status of whether he had signed the release, uh, releasing the city from any liability, correct? Uh, yes, sir. I was, uh, well, I was going based on what I was told by our legal team was the fact that I needed to wait and I couldn't get I couldn't interview Mr. Kidd until they actually resolved the uh, civil litigation. In fact, they, uh, and then the quote in the email above, if you'll scroll just up a little bit, Mr. Shulman, um, Ms. Becker ends up giving you a reply in quotes from that same attorney, Sean Conahan, uh, that had written the letter that we looked at earlier, uh, which is exhibit, uh, Union Exhibit 6. Is that correct? That she's referring to Mr. Conahan? Yes, sir. I see that there. Yes. Okay. And
And who is Mr. Grabose, G-R-E-B-O-S-Z? Uh, city assistant manager. Okay. All right. Now, if we'll turn, uh, if you would, uh, Mr. Shulman, just to the very next exhibit, Union Exhibit 11. Let me know when you have this, sir, and you can see it. I can see it. This has your name at the very top, so that means this was printed from your emails, correct? Yes, sir. And what you what the city provided is, is an email from you uh, from Gary Batten uh, on the very next day after the two emails we just looked at of uh, Union Exhibit 10. This is Union Exhibit 11. Gary Batten, he, is he the deputy chief? He was at the time, yes, sir. And he sends you an email the very next morning um, and he forwarded it, uh, some correspondence between Mr. Grabose and Chief Umberger, correct? Uh, yes, sir. And do you know why uh, former Deputy Chief Batten forwarded this to you? What? Why he forwarded this to me? Yes. It's because I, I try to keep all the emails in the file. Okay. And here on September 12th, uh, Grabose, Mr. Grabose, Assistant City Manager is telling Chief Umberger that after speaking with the lawyer, uh, we'll presume that's Mr. Conahan, that you can move forward with your investigation. You see that? Yes, sir. Okay. And as we know, uh, within two weeks there, uh, on the 27th of September, that's when you interviewed Mr. Kidd, correct? Correct. Did you interview anyone else prior to Mr. Kidd? Yes, I actually interviewed um, Officer Turner. Okay. He's no longer with the department, correct? Correct. Um, okay. I want to move now to your actual IA report, sir. Um, it appears from what we've been provided, there are three different versions of your IA report. Are you aware of that, sir? Three versions of the IA report? Yes, sir. Uh, no, I'm not aware of that. Are you not aware that you have one? There's a draft of October 16th, October 18th, and then a final version of October 25th, 2018? Is that because of the way I was saving them in my file? Is that what you're saying? No, sir. I'm okay. saying three different versions where there have been changes made. Are you aware of that? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Let's look uh, first at what is now Exhibit 30, Union Exhibit 30. 29, I'm sorry, 29. Tabs are getting uh, stuck here. Oops, my apologies. Go back. I'm sorry, Mr. Shulman. One more, 28. Okay. Um, 28 um, it has a cover email and then the 14-page report behind it. First of all, sir, uh, do you recall receiving an email from former Deputy Chief Gary Batten on October 16th? 2018? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Okay. And in this one sentence email, the deputy chief is asking you to read to make sure you're comfortable with the changes and then print it in the binder and place it in the binder with other documents for the chief. Um, yes, sir. My question is, since the version we have that follows doesn't have any, uh, it's not a, what we call a red line version or shows the changes. Can you summarize for us 
based on your recollection, what changes were made to this report that follows? And again, I, I couldn't tell you exactly what the changes were made. I, uh, basically, what uh, Deputy Chief Batten would do is actually look at it and read. Um, and if, you know, he dramatically, he wouldn't, if I had something, obviously grammar or something to that effect, he would make the changes for me um, as far as how it read. Um, but the facts of the report was never changed. Okay. The reason I'm asking that is I, uh, Chief Deputy, or, I'm sorry, that's what they call it in the Sheriff's Office. Deputy Chief, <laughs> Deputy Chief Batten um, did not conduct any of the interviews in this case, did he? No. Um, so all he did was review your report, your work product, correct? Correct. And would he then make changes? You said non-substantive changes. By that I mean, are you saying he would make like grammatical changes or, or or things of that nature only? Yes, sir. He will make changes as far as, you know, grammar, um, the way it, uh, it read, whether it actually flowed. Um, so stuff like that, dramatic, dramatical uh, uh, errors. Okay. Would he ever make any changes as to particular charges that should be either sustained or not sustained? Would he make changes as making, I'm sorry, right. can you read that? Yes, sir. Like, you do the IA, you look at the evidence, you do the interviews, correct? Correct. You watch the videos, not only of the interview of Mr. Kidd that we looked at and you did 34 times, but also the video of the incident itself, correct? Yes. So you, you're the one that's on the front line looking at everything. You're the one that writes the initial draft IA report, correct? Correct. And you're the one that makes the determination as to whether the allegations are sustained or not sustained, correct? Yes. Okay. My question is, did Deputy Chief Batten then ever change your recommended findings of sustained or not sustained? No, I don't recall him ever changing the, uh, whether I sustain or not sustain the, uh, the, uh, on my report. To your knowledge, did Deputy Chief Batten ever take out of your draft certain facts that you had discovered from interviewing witnesses? I'll be honest with you, I don't recall that. Okay. Do you recall anything specifically on this? I know this was your first IA you told us for the Correct. state plan. Mm -hmm. Do you recall specifically Deputy Chief Batten making any changes to your sustained findings or factual finding changes? No, I don't recall him making any changes as far as that was, you know, that would uh, change my, the sustains uh, okay. that I have already outlined. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's look if uh, Mr. Shulman, if you'll be so kind to scroll to the first page. Okay, we have three allegations here, as you see, uh, the three policies on page one. You see that, sir? I do. And these appear to be the same three uh, that were identified by Sergeant Estes, and I'm gonna give you the exhibit number here. Uh, I think it was exhibit nine, our exhibit nine. Um, We've got the same first three charges, 1.21, 1.82, and 1.83. You see that, sir? I do. And now, there was a fourth one at the time uh, in August of 18 from Sergeant Estes of 1.8.15 about no member shall um, or employee shall knowingly falsify any, any official report. You see that, sir? I see that. Okay. So by the time we get to your... I'm going to call it your, your draft of October 16, 2018, which is uh, now Exhibit 28. You no longer have 1.815 uh, in your report. Is that correct? Correct. 
<clears throat> if Mr. Schulman, you'll scroll to page two of this, you see there's no other, only those three allegations, correct? Correct. Now, if Mr. Schulman, if you'll go to pay of uh, this same exhibit, go to page, uh, the pages are not numbered, but it's the 10th page. Uh, let me see. It'd be in the very next page. I'm sorry, because it's counting the email as page one. Very next page. Okay, do you see the, here's the conclusion. Do you see that, sir? I do to see that. Okay. Now, are these your conclusions? Yes, sir. Were these your conclusions that you made solely on your own? Yes. In other words, no, no one influenced you, not the deputy chief, not the chief, no one. Correct. Okay. And you reached this conclusion as the assigned lieutenant over internal affairs based on your complete review of all the evidence and the videos and your understanding of the law, et cetera, correct? Correct. Now your finding on 1.8.3 of not using any more force than necessary is consistent with the legal conclusion of Mr. Uh, at least part of the conclusion of Mr. Conahan, the outside attorney, correct? So, correct. Now, you did disagree with Mr. Conahan on the uh, 1.8.2 charge about a person should not be arrested or detained. You felt that was a sustained charge. You said you read his 11 page or 12 page letter uh, where he found that, that both the stop and the uh, arrest is legal. You disagree with him on that one, though, correct? I did. But for the use of force, at least in this draft, you found not sustained, correct? I'm sorry? In this first draft dated October 16th, you have not sustained for um, on not using any more force than necessary. I, I see that, yes. Okay. Now, if... Now, in this, um, you, you, you noted some things like, uh, if Mr. Shulman, if you'll go further, uh, two more pages, which I guess would make it 13. In the paragraph that begins, third paragraph, from the onset of the contact, you see that, sir? I'm sorry, can you, you, can you send that in, please? Okay. Yeah, the third paragraph. Okay. From the, from the onset, you see that? Okay. First of all, I want to ask, ask you an overarching question. Is this entire document, which I think was a 14 page report, is this all your authorship? By, by that I mean, did you write this? Yes, I typed, I typed, uh, yeah, the, like I said, other than the, cha the changes that the uh, deputy chief made at the time, I, I actually did this report. Okay, this is your report, your words. Okay. Yes. Now, in the middle of this paragraph, beginning with from the onset, there's about the- Can you zoom in? I'm sorry, I can't see this very clear. Okay, there, there you go, is that better? Thank you, Mr. Yes, sir. Yep. This same paragraph that begins from the onset, there's a sentence that starts with uh, about the third sentence. Officer Molero then states, get away from me. Do you see that? Yes. It goes on to say, kid did not appear to be approaching Malero, Officer Malero in a fast or aggressive manner. However, the camera view is different than Officer Malero's vantage point. Do you see that, sir? I do. So you wrote this as your, uh, from the basis that you had watched the video and you agree that the camera view was different from Officer Malero's vantage point, correct? Uh, yes, sir. I, so here's, here's the, so what you're asking me if that I agreed that the video was not, it did not capture the entire incident. Is that, is, is that correct? That I'm at, is, is that what you were uh, implying here by, by the words you used? Yeah, that you couldn't see, obviously you couldn't see the subject's hands. Okay. And you already told us that you acknowledged on the video, you can't see Mr. Kidd's hands, correct? That's correct. Okay. 
And if we go to the very next page, uh, this is in the paragraph that begins, Officer Molero instructed kid to sit down. You see it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shulman. Officer Molero instructed Mr. Kid to uh, instructed kid to sit down. Do you see that? I do. Okay. There's a sentence in there that says, uh, I think it's the third sentence. Officer Molero stated that kid did again get close to him, and the angle of the BWC failed to show things from his vantage point. Do you see that? I see that. Is that similar to what you wrote on the prior page that you can't see everything from the BWC? Yes, sir. And, I, and I'll say it again. Um, you know, when the deputy chief, I, the, the person I, I respond to is the deputy chief. So if I have any questions in regards to my report in itself um, or clarifications, I sit down with him. If he asks, if he has other questions in regards to something that I never, you know, address, he would address it. Okay. Well, you didn't have any questions yet. Is that correct? I mean, when you submitted this, um, actually, this is the version. This is the version you got back on October 16th from uh, Deputy Chief Batten. Correct. Yes, sir. Yep. But the words that we just looked at—that was still your words, not. No, so, and I'll clarify this. There was some. Uh, the way he so when i turned in my report he actually reworded some of the like i said again for it to flow a lot better so um where they my words exactly not no so when i hand them over the 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 uh original to look over he may, he, you know, we'll just, you know, he'll discuss the fact that, hey, there's some changes that need to be made because it doesn't read, it doesn't read well. Um, so this is the reason why you'll see some changes in the report in itself, because he made some changes to it because of the way it actually read. Okay. But we can't see from the versions we've been provided what changes he made. Is that correct? And that's correct. And, and I actually cannot tell you what changes were made or what changes he made. Um, because you're saying specifically whether well, those are my exact words. And we obviously know that um, Deputy Chief Batten made some changes to it, um, like I said, for, you know, the proofreading and um, grammatically changes and so on and so forth. But do you have the, is, does there exist within the city somewhere in its records the ver a version to where the arbitrator and all of us could see what changes Deputy Chief Batten made to your original version. I tell you honestly, all I have is what we we've already provided. Okay. Let me ask it then differently. Do you agree with that sentence that the angle of the BWC failed to show things from Officer Malero's vantage point? Yes, sir. Okay. So regardless of whether that was your original verbiage or Chief Deputy Batten's change, you nonetheless agree that you can't see everything from the angle of the BWC. Correct. Okay. In the next paragraph that begins with, as officer Malero was talking to kid, do you see that? I do see that. There's a sentence. It's about two thirds of the way down within that same paragraph. It says it reads, it did not appear that kid was an immediate threat or was resisting Malero's efforts. However, Officer Malero stated that kid's finger was in very close proximity to his face and the camera angel, I guess you meant angle, did not show the fact that kid took a step towards Malero. You see that sentence, sir? I see that. Okay. Do you know if that was one of your original sentences or was that a change from Deputy Chief Batten. Again, I cannot say whether that's why sack words. I'm not 100% sure as to what changes were made. Um, so I, I'm not going to say that that's exactly my words. Okay. Well, the very next sentence I think is key because you say due to this fact, meaning the, the preceding sentence about whether Mr. Kidd's finger was in close proximity to his face. That's what you mean by due to this fact, correct? 
when you wrote due to this fact, are you referring to the prior sentence? Yes. Okay, due to this fact, I am unable to determine whether Austin Malero's actions were totally justified. Do you see that, sir? I see that. Okay, and was, was that your conclusion? Or do you know if that was one of Deputy Chief Batten's changes? Due to the fact that I... I, I, I honestly, I couldn't answer that question. I do, I do not remember whether it was actually something that was uh, changed by Deputy Chief or myself. I, I, I could not answer that question truthfully. Well, the reason that's important, I, I wanted to ask you about it is because again, this goes back, go back two pages. Um, where you reached your sustained or unsustained findings. Uh, just pause there. Thank you, Mr. Shulman. This, uh, what, what we just looked at had, was applicable to the issue of the use of force, correct? Correct. And because you said you were not able to determine uh, because of the camera angle, whether he put a finger in close proximity to Mr. Officer Malero's face, that's the reason you put not sustained on that charge, correct? Originally, yes. Yep. Okay. You say originally. Okay. I want to, at this time, uh, move into evidence Union Exhibit 28. Any objection from the city? No objection. Okay. All right. It's admitted. Okay. Now, I do want to note for the record, at the end of Union Exhibit 28, this is unsigned. Is that correct? Uh, the very last page. I cannot see it. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. That's my fault. Ms. Shulman, if you just go to the end, page 15. Okay, this, this one is not signed, correct? Correct. All right. Now, this was October 16. Now, if we'll look at Exhibit 29, Union Exhibit 29. This is from Gary Batten uh, to you. Do you see that, sir? I do see that. And by the way, it lists the complainant as being the chief of police, Jason Umberg, correct? Correct. Same three charges. Do you see that, sir? Yes. Okay. And uh, Mr. Shulman, if you'll go to page uh, 11. I'm sorry, 12, keep going, 13, I'm sorry, one more. Uh, trying to get to the, the conclusion, uh, scroll back up, I'm sorry, one more, one more, one more, there it is, thank you, sir. Okay, on page 10 of this version of the report, uh, this is two days later, would you agree with that, sir? Uh, yes. We see now that you have changed your recommendation on the charge of use of no more force than necessary to sustain, correct? Yes. And was that at the direction of the chief deputy or the chief? It was not at the discretion. Uh, uh, the, the chief never mentioned anything to me. I, like I said, I only direct... My direct contact was Deputy Chief Batten. Um, so as far as it being sustained, I think it was because of my, my, my thought process behind this uh, 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 incident um, where I felt that um, Mr. Kidd should have not been arrested in the first place, um, which led to obviously the, the, uh, the use of force um, used against Mr. Kidd. So, Lieutenant, you're, are you the one that made this change, or did someone influence you to make this change? I was not influenced, no, sir. Then how did the change come about? Again, like I said, I respond. I actually respond to Deputy Chief Batten. We discuss the issues at hand, and if I have a question or concern, I bring it to his attention. Well, 
do you know if the word sustained was your change on this page or did did that come in a uh, in a change from Deputy Chief Batten? It would be from me. Did he speak with you verbally, the Chief Deputy, uh, Deputy Chief? Yes, sir. I've, I've discussed the case with him. Yes, sir. Did he give you his opinion as to why that third charge should be uh, changed from not sustained to sustained? Well, I had some, I, to be honest, like I said, you know, in my opinion, after, you know, reviewing everything and, and, and looking at it, I honestly believe that this should, this should have never even taken place. So the resisting part of it um, should have never taken place. And it did on no cost. Well, Lieutenant, this is a pretty straightforward thing. What happened in the 48 hours between your last draft that we just looked at and this one where you have changed a very serious allegation of not using any force more than necessary to not sustain to sustain? Okay, again, I had a conversation with the deputy chief and I explained to, to him my concerns about um, the use of force. Although we couldn't see... Um, Jason, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Kidd's uh, uh, hands, I still believe at the time that the force had not been used. Even though we couldn't see Mr. Kidd's hands, we should have had used any force against this gentleman. So this is the reason why I actually expressed that concern with Deputy Chief. And it's the reason why you see sustained there. So the deputy chief did have some input that led to you making that change. I wouldn't say influence. I had some concerns that I brought to his attention. Okay. All right. Um, just a second here. Um, on page, let's see, it's the, if you'll go three pages, uh, uh, later in this same document, uh, Mr. Shulman, right there. Thank you. In the paragraph second from bottom that begins with officer Molero instructed, Yes, I see that. Yes, okay. sir. At the end of the second sentence that ends with the words or got closer to Malero. Do you see that, sir? I, I cannot see it. Is there any way we can zoom that in, please? Okay. Okay. I'm referring to the sentence that begins in reviewing the video. Do you see that, sir? Yes, sir. At the end of that sentence, it reads, Mr. Kidd took a step towards or got close to Molero. Do you see that? Do you see it ending right there, sir, that sentence? Mr. Kidd took a, yep. Okay. Hit pause there for a moment. Now, if I could ask Mr. Shulman to go back to exhibit 28 now. And go to page Uh, it would be 12. <laughs> Give me just a second. Hey, Gary, if you don't mind, I'll let you finish your line of questioning here. But if we could take a break somewhere in the next few minutes, that would that okay. Would be great. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Um, I've just got a couple questions here. Um, Absolutely. I, I actually, uh, Mr. Go one more page uh, later, if you would, uh, Mr. Shulman. Okay. I'm looking for the one to be. Uh, 
Should be page 13. Let me see, Officer Malera. Is this in Exhibit 28? Uh, okay. It is. Okay, thank you, sir. That's my fault. I, I see it here now. Okay, um, a moment ago where I, where, where I, I, I had you see where we were um, with the, the words ending or got closer to Malero. If you look in the paragraph middle of the page, Officer Malero instructed Kid to sit down. Do you see that, sir? Officer Malero instructed Kid to sit down. I'm, I'm looking for it. Yes, sir. Okay. Four lines down, do you see or got closer to Malero? Yes, sir. Same words that we just saw on Exhibit 29. Here's my question. The very next sentence in your draft of October 16th that we're looking at here, the sentence reads, Officer Malero stated that Kid did again get close to him and the angle of the BWC failed to show things from his vantage point. You see that, sir? I do not see that. Very next sentence, same paragraph. Okay. Do you see it now? Yes, sir. That sentence, and now we'll have Mr. Shulman go to Exhibit 29. That sentence is missing from this version. Are you aware of that? Uh, I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't recall it. Obviously, it's not there. Okay. Do you know if you took it out or did the deputy chief take that sentence out? I, I could not say that. I, I, I wouldn't, I, you know, I, I honestly couldn't tell you that. Okay. Well, that, that sentence is important. Would you agree about whether the BWC failed to show things from the vantage point of Officer Malero? Oh, I, I, I would see that it wouldn't have changed the facts. Okay. But you acknowledge that that sentence is missing from the par same paragraph that we just looked at in Exhibit 29, correct? Yes, sir. But you can't tell us how that happened, how, it, how it's now missing. A again, um, it could have been myself or it could have been Deputy Chief. I, I, I don't know. I, I truly don't know. But what we do know that happened in those 48 hours between exhibits 28 and 29 is that now you went from not sustained on using no more force than necessary to sustained, correct? Correct. Um, has exhibit 29 been admitted to evidence? No, sir. Okay, I'd like to move for exhibit 29 to be admitted into evidence. Any objection from the city? No objection. All right, it's admitted. Um, we can go ahead and take the break now at the request of Mr. Rochers, uh, if everyone else is okay with that. All right, let's take, uh, will 10 minutes suffice? Yes, sir. For us. Okay, we're okay. We'll off the record for 10 minutes. So I'll see you back at 1120. Thank you. 1130.
All right, good morning. Who else do we have here? I see Lieutenant Milan. Mr. DeRosier is uh, muted, both audio and video. I see Ms. Riggs. I guess we're waiting on uh, the union and uh, management. Yes, Thank sir. you for being prompt, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. We're just waiting on Gary, Mr. Arbitrator, to be in just a second. Okay. okay. Looks like we're also waiting on Management Council as well. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. How's the weather over there, Mr. Shulman? Gorgeous. Okay. Absolutely gorgeous. Hmm. How about up by you folks? I think it's okay today. It's, o it's overcast, okay. Mr. Arbitrator. Oh, was it? It's, <laughs> it's in the 70s, so I'm good. It's below 70, I'm not good. <laughs> Understood, sir. I did send you an email and, and opposing counsel. Well, I believe you, but I don't see it. Hmm. Let me just step out and make sure real quick. Wait.
gray. All right, so I see that the union and management are both back. Lieutenant Milan is back. Are we ready to go back on the record? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go back on the record. Uh, union was uh, inquiring on direct examination of Lieutenant Milan. Okay, and on that uh, short break, thank you, uh, Mr. Shulman. Did you receive an email from me? I did not. Okay. Uh, Alex, did you receive one? Yes, I did. Okay, um, I did send it to, it looks like it went through. Um, we have an additional exhibit. Um, let me see, I wonder if I could step out and put it. Oh, I can resend it again from here. So I'll try real quick here. Um, yeah, I've, I've logged directly into my, my uh, Gmail account and it's not there. So it's not a, an Outlook artifact. C. Shulman at adrservices.biz. No. Oh, my, my apologies. Right. Uh, Has not been that for about uh, seven years. I think it pulled it up by, <laughs> by default. My, my, is it Chris at shulmanadrlaw.com? It is. Okay. Okay, I'm going to, um, it's coming, it should be coming through in just a moment. You know, I think when you type in someone's name, it just automatically, for some reason, it pulled that address up and I didn't catch that. Um, that's fine. I apologize. I guess that's because we've worked together that long, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Almost as long as I've been working with uh, Mr. Wood's firm. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, All right, I have received the email. Uh, this okay. one was not sent to opposing counsel, so I'm going to forward it to them Oh, as well. I did. Mr. Disrosier, yeah, got it. We have it. I understand. I'm just simply making oh. sure that my records show that everything I got from either side has gone to both. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so you need me to All download right. and open that document? Mr. Wilson? Yes, um, I have it. it, it uh, I'm sorry, are you asking me if I was able to open it? Do you need me to yes, sir. display that document, sir? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. 